briefly about um, Best Buddies is an international company or organization, sorry, and um, we're they're in most states, um, and we're working on getting an office here in South Carolina. So we're just um, working on uh, we have small chapters at some of the local call, well, Furman, um, USC, and uh, College of Charleston, I believe it is. So just small chapters within there right now for our services, but we're working on opening the office in Greenville hopefully soon, and then we'll start our services there. So that Lucas is going to explain all that to you. Was, uh, I didn't know I was going to have such a nice mm -hmm. prompter to present on today, so I'm taking, here, I'm taking advantage of my resources. Um, but. I'm clicking on history and it's sort of fitting because I have to give you a little bit of my background as to why I'm involved with this and how I came to Greenville without being a blowhard and wasting your time. So I'm watching the clock. But uh, I accidentally had a breakfast uh, with the mayor that I didn't plan for and I think he was kind of offended that I didn't get up and shake his hand but I had a mouthful of eggs and biscuit. So basically his summary was that we are the fastest growing city in America. Um, and the U.S. Census Bureau has, has really sort of revealed that. I came to this area in 2008 uh, because of a, a, a school off Wesley Road off Wade Hampton called Hidden Treasure Christian. So in August of 2008, my family uprooted from Northwest Chicago to move down here so that my younger sibling with an intellectual disability could attend Hidden Treasure Christian School. Uh, and as you can tell, it probably tells you a lot about my mother as well um, and her determination to scour the earth to find a place called Greenville that believes in can as opposed to cannot um, and understands that all things are possible with the right energies and focus and goals. So, my background is very much involved with having a family member that is in this world. And I'm going to share with you some facts that are unfortunately true, but the statistics are necessary. This organization already exists, but it does not exist in South Carolina yet. Uh, it exists in certain extents, you could say, but doesn't exist formally in this model, where it is already successfully replicated um, and has a long associated history with it. But basically, Best Buddies International, uh, it's a nonprofit dedicated to establishing a global volunteer movement that sort of uses three pillars. Um, that is one-to-one -one friendships, quite literally peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, integrated employment, which what a better place than a right-to-work state like South Carolina uh, with you know record-setting uh, unemployment rates at the moment for all the positivity. There are actually more jobs uh, existing that we can fill as a local economy. And then lastly, which was one of my favorite parts, leadership development. Um, teaching people to be self-advocates for themselves who have a very broad range of IDD, intellectual and developmental disabilities, diagnosed and undiagnosed. So I first found this organization in 2012. Uh, they have a leadership conference at the University of Indiana, IU Bloomington. And it's a gathering. Thousands of people show up from all over the world, all over the country to participate in this gathering. And it is, you know, it's leadership conference. It's bringing out the best of the participants and chapters all over, and they share ideas and get together and collaborate and celebrate and grow. Coincidentally, this started on a college campus. This started at Georgetown University by Anthony Kennedy Shriver. Uh, as you know in your political history, the Kennedys have had a huge impact um, in the IDD community just based upon their own familial experience. Having it in their families and being in an influential position to tell others this is okay and this is not and dealing with reality properly with dignity uh, through the best ways that we know how to. So, Brief history, so it's over 50 years of the Kennedy family sort of heading what we are all wanting to achieve in this sphere <clears throat> together. Uh, I won't go through all of these, but stretching back from 1963, we're extremely disruptive in uh, regulation or, or that thereof, lack thereof, and how we recognize 
uh, others and treat others at a federal level. Um, so here, you know, having widely, widely connected extremities into um, modern regulation and laws that we see today, this organization has a hand in simply of just who is heading it. Um, one thing I, I want to accelerate to sort of where we are, this organization has already celebrated its 25 year anniversary. And as you can tell, what you will find upon exploring is that this is a very successful model in large, dense MSAs. Um, people where there, you know, there's a very noticeable need in the community and it's very empowered and it's very loud and it's very collaborative. Um, you're going to see a lot of friendship walks and bike races uh, with corporate wheels. So an inclusion organization, I'm going to get to its services. Um, one that's, you know, my favorite is sort of down here at this last one. And if you're not familiar with Carlos Slim, uh, he's a telecommunications magnet from Mexico, but why I think that this photo is very significant is he's making his pledge in the I'm in to hire. Um, and what the I'm in to hire pledge is, is that I recognize that I employ 450,000 people in my organization and in certain levels over here and certain levels over here, I can pledge to incorporate a certain amount of my workforce to be folks that you represent and that you work with. And what kind of an effect does this have? It's not just having somebody to just be able to earn a wage or participate in the economic system, but it allows for dignified living. It allows for single parent households to be alleviated. Um, it, it allows for independent, uh, achieving a level of independence that would not normally be able to be achieved. So that's why this organization is extremely empowered. Um, these presentations here, they very uh, explicitly go into sort of, you know, our core. Uh, very simply laid out with as little text as possible. Friendships, jobs, and leadership. And I'll tell you, what really had me sold on this was witnessing this in person uh, will will um, soften your heart to see somebody get up and be an advocate for themselves uh, who you wouldn't maybe normally expect them to be able to or be able to do it well. Uh, you find that sort of through this ethos, people are surprising and when you focus on what they can as opposed to constantly focusing, you know, on the compliment. It's just one or the other. So we're an international organization. Um, here's our presence. This is estimated sort of what we impact and where we are. So why not South Carolina? You know, why not Greenville? Why not the upstate? Um, we have a great presence of universities that are within two, two hours. Um, so you know, internationally recognized educational institutions that can join these ranks and have. So it shouldn't make it sound like it's a completely new territory, but there are colleges and schools that are involved. Furman has a chapter, Cliff Clemson has a chapter. Oh, yeah. So but what we need to do is we need to get them under the banner of having a state office. And that's what's represented here is there's a presence, but we need a fixture, and I'll get to why. This just gives you a, a bit better background of the details that I say, but we call him AKS sometimes with an acronym, but he's our founder, founded Georgetown in the 80s. Um, you know, this background again of the Eunice and, and her impact uh, and creation of the Special Olympics, which is actually how Adam and I and sort of Jody really found each other was through our local Special Olympics organization mm -hmm. sponsored through Greenville Rec. Adam and I are with Unified Sports. So it was fitting that we sort of saw the same strengths and positivity in what this is. Global volunteer movement. And that's just, who wants to have a vision where you're putting yourself out of business? But that's what this is. It's mostly social change and acceptability is because this is very top-down. This is extremely macro. This is, uh, this is not a, a super micro environment. But, I mean, it's, it's just 
where can we interact in our community? This is what we are trying to embody. There's more middle school, high school. These sort of feed into each other um, very nicely and naturally, very organically with participation. Letting people know at a younger age, A, inclusion. Inclusion is what this is really preaching, which is why it can put itself out of business, which is okay, because then we've, we've achieved our goal. Um, some school-based programs. This is the ambassadors I was talking about, is how to be a self-advocate for yourself, how to give yourself a voice when you're really not allowed to or able to. You're not limited to face-to-face -face correspondence. It can be email, electronic correspondence of these peer-to-peer. The one-to-one -one friendships pillar. The employment is literal job placement. And the leadership advocacy is quite literally public speaking opportunities. And this office organizes that in which Joey's heading for us. So here's our jobs. Again, more employers pledging, recognizing that there is an untapped workforce over 200 million people, 200 million people that could fill a slot. We already have distribution facilities and major employers that are already corporate involved, publics being one of them. Walgreens, I believe Rite Aid, we can verify that, but there's already a very long list of corporate sponsors that exist in our <coughs> ecosystem. How to be good citizens. Um, some drivers of what we're addressing. Again, very big about this one. Right to work state, perfect environment for social inclusion. That's what we embody as a community. We're a diverse, multicultural community that's attracted a lot of international investment. So, this is, uh, this is our advisory board, which Jody can add to. We need more leadership. Uh, we have about, what would you say, five core people. Uh, we could use more help. Um, this is to say that we have something and it's moving and we have a prototype uh, so we're not looking to do something new we're just looking to bring a concept and have it more formally here which fortunately there's a dollar amount attached to that but two hundred and fifty thousand dollars gets us an office an executive director and a full-time staff provided by best buddies international out of florida so it's just a matter of their model is Find enough people that believe in what you're doing, get them together and show us that you're committed to our goals and our mission, and we'll do the rest. Um, and by the rest, I mean formalize those employment positions of people that are already ready to do the job. So you can see the, the struggle here um, without a group of people saying, we believe in what you're doing in Boston, we believe in what you're doing in Charlotte, we believe in what you're doing in Miami, we believe in what you're doing in San Francisco, We'd like to have that here. They listen, and they make it happen. So this is exactly what we're in the phase of right now, is we've established an advisory board, um, a leadership committee, uh, and, and we're moving in that. We have the complete endorsed support of Best Buddies International. Our part now is left to raise the funds to get the office planted here full time, which will cover rent expense. Again, the executive director, um, and the other positions necessary to run it. There's somebody that works full-time employment staffing, somebody who works full-time in organizing the peer-to-peer, -peer, which by the way, those are extremely secure and extremely formal. And the person participating is very much held accountable. <clears throat> so for any system that's already existed in middle schools and high schools and colleges, it's already there. Let's formalize it under one banner and make it efficient, make it safe, make it successful. Um, if there's one thing that I found about finding Rebuild Can, there's a woman named Carolyn O'Connell, and I'm extraordinarily thankful that she showed me, but being a resident here for eight years and not fully understanding that there is a lot of voices saying somewhat of the same things. And I think that this organization, Rebuild Can, by what we're doing now, really does allow us to get together and share these ideas. And uh, I think that the collaboration aspect is how we get forward. That's how we we trudge on and find new things. Um, so here's the expansion campaign. Um, it's a color for a reason. It's not here. Um, Georgia, it's kind of sad, but that's deep south. Um, are we
we a victim of our times or are we at the cusp of the cutting edge? Um, you know, who are our best buddies? There you have it, folks. We're not alone, but we do need some help. Uh, so these are places where we actually have students that are committing their time and effort and resources and organizing uh, this effort, and they're helping us out. But these are the people that are already on the ground, so we're close. But you can see that this stretches from the upstate to the coast to, to the Myrtle. <laughs> it's here in our state capital. And then here locally at Furman, which has been a great partner, by the way, in helping us host events, uh, donating event space, time, parking. There we are. There's the presence physically. And this is going to be the nucleus, the command center. There we go. Clemson needs help. Applications for buddies, peer-to-peer -peer friendships. Here are the officers in the organization. Here are how many successful pairings we've already created. Back to how we get that office. We've done the board development. We're always open to new commitments. Um, and that's open to anybody that's willing to give their time, energy, and has the ability to fit in their schedule. Our strategic plans for 2018, we've had to reevaluate these, um, but it's all geared towards this funding goal of $250,000. Um, and that's it. That gets us to the next level. So it gets us gets us off the ground and formalized in, in recognizing that there will be an office that we can step into and it is established and it is staffed by Best Buddies International with Best Buddies International employees on Best Buddies International training and paperwork. This is a very social organization. It comes with anything with social inclusion. We have corporate support. Again, one of our most successful local grocers is already participating in this in other states. It's not Greenville, um, not South Carolina. And that's the other thing here is I have to catch myself. I keep using Greenville because we're here, but this is affecting the entire state. This logo was generously donated, I think, in the 80s. It's meant to be two individuals embracing and lifting each other up. So that was, you know, designed professionally and donated to the organization. Um, but there is an incredible energy about this organization. Um, you got to see it. Um, so I'll close with just, we'll play their sort of PSA that will maybe clarify anything that I was ambiguous about and we'll end with that. See how nimble my fingers are. I think that this is the best way to close it out. Here we go. Everybody needs somebody. A friend. Somebody who knows. What makes you laugh? How do you feel about football? Movies. Singing. Light. Somebody who always has your back. A real friend. A best buddy. But sometimes it can be hard for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to make friends. That's why we started Best Buddies. A network of more than 70,000 friends across America and around the world. Best Buddies matches people like me. Like me. Like me. With people like me. Like me. Like me. To create one on one friendships that foster understanding. Break down barriers and help us see how. Beautiful. Smart. Funny. And amazing. We all are. And we can use your help. Go to bestbuddies.org and see how you can get involved. Because everybody needs a best buddy. <coughs> Including me. 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 You. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? 
current chapters, are they pretty much like the program books that are like all students from people. there, but they won't follow well, the inside? They are students from yeah. Yeah, each university there, are the, um, but the, um, the IDD um, are not necessarily students, they're from our community, so <coughs> they'll, they'll match them up. And, it, and it's, it's very carefully paired between age and interest and again, very secure process, but um, you know, as you notice, if you, know, you have somebody in your life that has IDD, there are different stages of things that hit you. First thing that hits you in the face are costs become very upfront and real. Um, for example, my brother had open heart surgery right out of the gate. Uh, so there's a cost there. And a private institution being down here, starting at a young age, is private tuition. Um, you know, there are things that, you know, what you want, there's a, there's a financial correlation. Um, I ask my question because I know that to be able to serve the population, you will need the volunteer money. So right. I guess that would be, I know right now you're focused on fundraising, but what, do <coughs> you have a process yet for recruiting more buddies to the help? Yes, that's actually an extremely good question. Uh, the universities, the high schools, and the middle schools are where we answer your question. So actually, where we can, where, for instance, um, ESOT. I know that they have peer organizations. We could go through public, you know, public schools have a, have a, you know, ability to represent themselves where people can. And so they take strides to, excuse me, have programs and peer mentoring opportunities, but they're individualized for the specific school. This is Eastside's program. This is Jail Man's program. This is Greenville High's program. This is Malden's program. We want to have our hands in those to bring this a unified process because we believe it will make it more efficient. Because this is already successful with a track record. So why mess with something that is working just fine? Um, it's a good model. It's something that we can replicate. And we want to start middle schools because naturally the age of children where you can head and educate behavior that can travel to then a high school and broaden the opportunities and broaden the perspective and then graduate to college and broaden the opportunities and broaden <coughs> the perspective. And that is where the social change is, is that we're really sort of working backwards if we're starting at the end of somebody's life. That's not to say, you know, they're the citizens. That is uh, quite literally me as a 40-year-old individual willing to mentor and be a peer to another 40-year-old in the community, uh, an 18 to an you know 18-year-old. Um, have somebody that gets you where you are in life, so that my brother's best friend isn't mom, or that my brother's my brother is my best friend. But given an opportunity where you sit down with the kid and say, "Well, my mom's my best friend, or my my dad's my best friend," and that that's fine. But I think that we all speak and socialize with people that are outside our families at some point in our lives and it's healthy um, it's very healthy you get surprising results yes sir what's the relationship going to be between the state office once you started up and the local chapters very good question and if i right so the, the chapters are still going to be in the colleges um just kind of a, a mentoring kind of program with them once we open the state office we'll have all the other services available as far as the employment and the, and the leadership and that too. And, and um, doing the buddy program other than just these um, college students, it would open up to the public, you know, as far as buddies. Now, all services are currently offered in South Carolina is exactly what she's getting to, is that the furthest that this organization exists in our community and our state are college and high school students taking an initiative to do the peer-to-peer, -peer. and that's where the buck stops, because we don't have permission to do the employment counseling, to have the further benefits of what this organization brings. So we can't even get to see what that looks like without getting this office. This office, here's the, here's the, the, the uh, Maddie with Chance. She is the student heading firms. She has about 10 student volunteers at the moment. And she's getting ready to pass the torch in her graduation this upcoming May. When she needs something, 
when she has a question and she needs to organize something, she has to call Miami, Florida. This is what we want to eliminate. She has to call and Skype a video conference with somebody in Miami at this headquarters um, to get anything done and to further along her efforts. She has to go two states to the south. So we can break that down by having that local and having that within a three hour driving distance of the area. So again, efficiencies, um, we're going for efficient, efficiency and growth. I'm just wondering with the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, are you focusing now more on high schools? Is that where you're trying to get the peers as opposed to going to universities? Is well, we're, we're, the programs start in high schools and, and a lot of their emphasis is the buddies after high school. There's a lot of programs for kids during the school years, but there's not a lot for kids after graduation. So we start the programs in the high schools so they can, you know, as the kids can um, take it onto their colleges or wherever. And then, um, and then as adults still want to continue with the program, but, you know, um, adults with IDD also as well, you know, trying to match them up as well. So, so we start the programs in the schools and then it, it so does are you extend. in the schools now, in the high schools? Um, we're in very few right now, I think. Our goals and initiatives as a whole, as the organization, so the vision, again, to put Best Buddies out of business, envisions a world with IDD, individuals with IDD, so successfully integrated into schools, workplaces, and communities that its current efforts and services will be absolutely unnecessary. So that's the putting yourselves out of business. The goals for the 2020 initiative, uh, the 2020 initiative was, was created in 2011 um, with the goal of opening offices in all 50 states by the end of 2020. Also includes plans to train 4,000 buddy ambassadors, develop 1,000 jobs that were brand newly created for people with IDD around the world, and increase the number of school-based chapters to 2,500. As a result of these ambitious expansion efforts, Best Buddies hopes to become a household name by the end of 2020. Again, these were set about in 2011. I think we're well on the way to achieve it. Um, and uh, any other questions that you folks have? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned like you're a four-year-old, so there's really no way you can start with someone even 30 years old who's out of high school and wanted a buddy at this point until you get to state office. Correct. Okay. Actually, that's a very good point. Uh, so there are, again, benefits and services of this organization that will never see the light of day in our community without a head office. We can only get a taste. Just a matter of how things are. What are your plans for raising funds for this? <clears throat> there are several. Yeah, um, I mean, we're looking for um, corporate donations, um, private sponsors and we're doing some fundraising events this coming year. So. These fundraising events take the form of 5Ks, massive 5K attendance with an admission or private donations. Um, I'm constantly in a world where 501c3s are dedicated to on an annual basis uh, in financial planning. So we are going all angles. Um, of just a fact there are usually there are some very high net worth individuals that endorse this organization in other parts of the world, so that is sometimes low entry barrier. For instance, I'll give you a low close to home example. Charlotte, in this, I believe, this spring or at least this calendar year, launched a gala, which are common uh, themes, but they had their gala uh, as a brand new organization. Charlotte is now has, a, has an official office and chapter, and they raise almost $400,000 in a day through just pledges and hosting this gala event, um, which is not meant to be inaccessible, it's just meant to be a little bit fancy. But they were able to have theirs and they were able to achieve close to a $400,000 target. So it got them their office and then a little bit of walking around money. But um, if anybody has $250,000 in their pockets, we're that too. And, 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 and <laughs> that's nice. We all just know that that's not reality. So it is us and this board being creative, being resourceful, and getting the message out to see if we can get a few more people that want to get on the wagon um, and then help us. How much will your calls be after year one? That's just it. Is it's, that's, a, that's a good question that we can have privately. 
The reason why I say that is we are providing an extraordinary amount of benefits and self-sustainability with this initial fund. This is not $250 that Greenville must, $250,000 that Greenville must raise. This is $250,000 that every office is to be raised. This is a fixed amount and it's because <coughs> Best Buddies International has costed and built in what it takes at point of inception in terms of rent expense, staffing, payroll. And it's handled through Miami. Miami's a flagship. Um, but I think it's time. I think that I think it's time. I think it would be great. It's too many people can be involved in benefit, including our school systems, most importantly, from an economic benefit. Um, two hundred million people with a population of two hundred million people that can be um, seen and heard from for the first time in a long time. That's what we're doing. Any other questions? Thank you very much.